Welcome to Something More. I'm your host, Kelsey O'Malley. Today's show is gonna stir your faith as you learn how to partner with the Holy Spirit to receive battle strategies from heaven. My guest today is Carrick Butler. He is a pastor of Faith Christian Center. He's an author, he's a friend of God. And Carrick, you wrote a devotional called Battle Strategies from Heaven. And I found it so awesome that the Lord revealed to you the Holy Spirit as the strategist, because we know the Holy Spirit as the comforter, the counselor, Counselor, our friend. So will you share with us just how you got that revelation of how the Holy Spirit is a strategist in our lives? You know, what's interesting with that devotional, I didn't start out, that was not my, what I wanted to write most of it about. It just kept flowing and flowing and flowing. And I got it from Isaiah chapter 11. You know, we know it's about Jesus, how the spirit of counsel and might is on him. So I looked up that word in the Hebrew, that word counsel, and what it was used in the Old Testament. And it was used of those who give strategy in times of war to kings. Wow. And I said, the Holy Spirit is my strategist. He's my strategist. He has a strategy for my life. Mm -hmm. And when I look at him, I don't have to follow everybody else's strategy because there's a strategy for my own personal life. There's a strategy for your personal life. There's a strategy for all of our lives. He has a strategy and he wants us to win. He wants us to have the victory. Remember as it says in the New Testament, thanks be to God who always calls us to try. Thanks be to God who always gives us the victory. But we don't get victory by just staying at home doing nothing. Most of the victories God gives us are on the battlefields of life where we have to fight the good fight of faith, but not just doing our own thing, but following the strategy the Holy Spirit has for us. Wow. And I love that the Lord reveals him in a special way to you because what happens is when we catch a revelation of the Holy Spirit and he becomes real to us yeah. and involved in our lives, then he helps you plan your strategy. So let's say we're seeking God for strategy. Yeah. So I'm at home. I need Lord. I need you. I need you to come and, and speak to me. So what would you say? How can we position ourselves and how where do you start with this? For me, my starting point where I begin to release my faith and pray concerning this is praying the Ephesians 1 prayer from verse 16 through 23. Like, Father, I pray that you, the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, that the eyes of my understanding are enlightened, that I may know what is the hope of your calling and what are the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints and the exceeding greatness of your power towards us who believe according to the work of your mighty power, which you wrought in us and in Christ when you raised us from the dead and set us your own right hand in heavenly places far above all things, he put all things under my feet. And I began to remind myself who he is to me, how he is my strategist, how he is my counselor, how he is my helper, how he'll never leave me nor forsake me. And then I asked, well, Father, I want insight today. One of the things I've been praying recently, Father, I want insight that brings utterance and utterance that brings insight. I want you to say about me that I've well seen, like you said of those in Old Testament, son of man, you've seen well. I want you to say that to me that I've seen well. And I want to take what I've seen and go out like David and behave myself wisely and prosper wherever I go. And so that's when I begin, to, where I start, and I ask for insight. And then I take time and I pray in the Spirit. Because when you pray in the Holy Spirit, you're praying on mysteries or divine secrets, plans, and purposes. It's an elevated discourse between you and God. We're praying out His plans, His strategies. And I'll take time and pray. And as I do that, I'm listening on the inside because He wants to share things. And sometimes it may be in words, it may be ideas, it may be innovation. One of the things I got a couple years ago, I was walking in my house, just getting ready for the day, and Psalms 119 popped up in my heart. The entrance of His word gives light. And so I said, the entrance of his word gives light. So I'm innovative and I always know what to do. It just popped out of my mouth. Wow. And then I was like, I said, I'm going to say that every day. And I started looking <laughs> up that scripture, the entrance, the unfolding. And so when we get into his word every day and we sit under anointed teaching, the word is being unfolded and there's enlightenment that comes, this innovation that comes, strategies come. Every time we set ourselves in a place where we can hear from God, mm -hmm. he wants to give us strategies. The Holy Spirit is the most creative being ever and he's innovative and he has strategies for each and every one of us. And I've set my faith to believe that, and that's what I've seen in my personal life, in my family, in our ministry, and what we do. Things that we've accomplished, we're like, we, well, how did you do that? We're still figuring out. We're just following the plan they put on the inside. Like it says in Proverbs, that counsel, a plan, a strategy is deep within the heart of man, but a man of understanding draws it out. The plan and the strategy for every single believer is on the inside of the heart, but they have to draw it out. Mm. 
And so you talk about in your um, devotional about the importance of our heart before God. Yeah. That that has, um, that's a big part of receiving battle strategies from heaven is the posture of your heart. So share with us how can, how can we uh, just open our heart even more still to Jesus uh, to receive insight, divine insight from heaven. I learned that from Mark chapter four, your heart has to be good ground if you want the word to produce. And one of the things I encourage my congregation, we put, we say this every Sunday before we get into the word is we forgive everybody of everything. Unforgiveness will corrupt the soil of your heart. Wow. Faith cannot work in an unforgiving heart. And the thing is, you need to forgive. You have to let things go. Unforgiveness will keep you from hearing from God. Unforgiveness is a great breeding ground for bitterness. And it's like it says in Hebrews that because of the root of bitterness, many were defiled. Mm. And so the thing is, I say it to my congregation this way, some of you think you're operating by wisdom, but you're actually operating by bitterness. Because wow. your bitterness has become your operating system. You've been so used to being bitter and hurt and, and unforgiveness, you make decisions based off of that instead of the wisdom of the Spirit. So you think you're following strategies from heaven, but you're following strategies from your own bitterness. And so part of it is forgiving. How would you lead people at home through a prayer if, like you do with your church, would you lead them through a prayer if they still have some unforgiveness or bitterness on their heart? Sure. One of the things I want to encourage you is forgiveness is not a feeling. It's an act of your will. It's an act of your faith. So we're going to pray. You might say, well, I'm still mad at them. You probably are, but you released your forgiveness. And so how often do you have to do this? Until you're not mad at them, until you're not planning to get back at them. And so I want to lead you in this prayer. It's very simple. It's what I practice in my own personal life, and I teach people to do as well. And you can do it too. You ready to pray? Say, Father, you've forgiven me. So I forgive everybody of everything. I let it all go. Holy Spirit, help me to walk in forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And when we come right back, uh, Carrick's going to share more about the, the soil of your heart and the importance of how you can uh, position it before God to receive more and more from the Holy Spirit. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Something More. You know, we were talking about the parables of the seed and the sower before we took a break, and we're going to jump back into that now because there's so many vital keys to that story of us growing and receiving from the Lord. So I know you started to share with me during the break about the importance of the Word, of the Word actually being received into our hearts. Tell us about that. You know, Mark chapter 4, Jesus said, the sower sows the Word. And so when we look at, you know, so seed going into the ground, we, you know, we think, okay, that's what a farmer does. But when we look at receiving, another word to say is to catch. And so it's like if we were playing a sport and I was passing the basketball, you got to catch it. You know, if, you know, football, they have to catch it because if they don't catch it, they drop it and no one's going to score. And so a lot of times what believers do is we don't catch the word. Or if we catch it, we fumble. Or we catch it, we turn it over. And that's where we lose a lot of victories in our life. And the part of receiving is sometimes God will say stuff to our heart or see stuff in the word and we just don't get it. And like, oh, I don't get it. And we just let it go. Mm -hmm. We drop the ball. We turned over. But the thing is, if we hold on to the word and we're honest with God, saying, you know what, God, I don't get it, but you said it, I believe it, teach me, that word will produce in our lives. And I want to pray for people who, have, for whatever reason, have let go of the word. You know, Good. things they have forgotten or things that they heard and they just let go and they think it's too late. No, it is not too late for you. Mm -hmm. If there's breath in your body, there is still time. So I want to pray for you real quick. Father, I pray for the people who have heard from you for whatever reason, because of not understanding it, they've let go of words. Things that you've spoken to them over the years and over the decades. I pray that you bring it back to their remembrance through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, that you give them another opportunity to grab hold to that word, so that word will produce in their lives 30, 60, and 100 fold, as it says in Mark chapter four. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. What about hearing God's voice speak yeah. to us because a lot of people watching at home right now will say, well, that's awesome that we can receive battle strategies, but my receiver is 
<laughs> not tuned in to God's voice and yeah. I'm having a hard time hearing. So for your own personal life, when you seek God and you hear the voice of God, what do you do? How do you, you know, your secret place time when you get in to receive this from the Holy Spirit, what does that look like for your personal life? Well, it's kind of funny because it's not going to seem spiritual. So the <laughs> first time I heard God's voice, I believe I was about eight, between eight and ten years old, and I was playing video games. And I would play video games and he'd talk to me. And so throughout my teen years, it got so constant that I would take my prayer journal next to my PlayStation because I knew every time <laughs> I would play games, he would talk to me. And one of the things I learned was I'm at rest, mm. I'm at peace. I'm in a position where I can hear from Him. And so now it's not always just in a prayer closet, even though that is important to hear from God. Sometimes when I'm out on a walk, sometimes it's when I'm running, or I'm just living open is the key. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we think, well, we have to put all this performance in to get God to talk to us. No, He loves us. Yes. He loves to talk to us. He wants to talk to us more than we want to hear Him talk. Yes. And we have to believe what Jesus says, that we know His voice and the voice of a stranger we will not follow. And so people say, well, Jesus doesn't talk to me. I said, well, Jesus said He does. I believe Jesus over you. He does. Yes. You just have to chill. You have to relax and let Him talk to you. Because sometimes it's an impression on your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a peace, you have a direction in the heart. Other times it's a full sentence. But if we allow ourselves to be open and believe what the Bible says, that the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit, He gives evidence to our spirit, we'll have the evidence that we'll need. We'll have the witness that we'll need. We'll have the instruction that we need. It'll, and then sometimes we'll be like, well, we want God to tell us step one through 100, like right Right, now. right. That would be great. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> That's not usually how He operates. Yeah. But we'll know exactly what we need to know at exactly the right time. And sometimes it is in a spiritual moment, we have the spiritual goosebumps that go with it. Yeah. Other times you're just living life. Mm -hmm. And so so many people, you know, they listen, well, God didn't talk to me at prayer time this morning. Well, just live open. He may talk to you when you're with the kids. He may talk to you when you're making dinner. He may talk to you when you're driving to work. He may talk to you while you're cutting the grass. Live open, He will talk to you. Because the greater one, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us, and He wants to direct us. He wants to guide us. He wants to lead us. We just have to live yes. open to our strategies. So it sounds like identity is really important, yeah. that we know we're loved. Yes. And that we know He speaks to us. Yes. And by just being who we created to be. If you have a quirkiness, like if you like to play video games yes. or whatever you like to do, God's there with you. Yeah. And so speak on identity, because I know that was um, part of your devotional as well, the importance of knowing your identity and what God says about you as opposed to what the enemy comes and says about you. That is so important. One of my favorite scriptures in John 17 is when Jesus is praying, and He's praying, Father, let them know that I, you love them as much as you love me. So I tell people this, and it you know, shakes up people's religion. I'm like, God loves you as much as He loves Jesus. Yeah. And you know, like Christians, oh, of course God loves me. And they have a mental understanding of that. And some of them let it go to the heart. I was like, no, He loves you as much as He loves Jesus. They go, oh, no, Jesus was perfect. Yes, He was. And God still loves you as much as He loves Jesus. And so one of the first revelations you have to get is God really loves you, not the perfect you, not how you look on Sunday morning, not yes. the face you put on. He loves you on your worst day. He loves yes. you on your hot mess day. He yes. loves you when you're doing good. He loves you when you're smiling. He loves you when you're mad. He loves you when you just repented. He loves you when He knows you need to repent. Yes. He loves us. And that love, when we understand it, it helps us open up. Because yeah. people have a hard time hearing from a God they think is mad at them. That's a good word. They won't want to hear from Him. They're like, oh, I can't hear from Him. No, you don't want to hear from Him because you think He's mad at you. No, He loves you. Yes. We have to change our mindset that when we mess up, we run to our Father, not from Him. Good. Because He wants to help us. He wants to clean us up. He wants to restore us. This is who He is. When we change our mindset and understand who God has made us to be, because a lot of people don't want to think they can hear from God because they just sinned. Well, that doesn't fit in the whole biblical lineage. But also understand this. The Bible says we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing we can do can change our standing. Think about this. Before we got mm -hmm. saved, we might have done good things, but that make us righteous. Right. We only became righteous when we put our faith in Jesus. And so even after we save and we make mistakes, it doesn't change our standing. And because we have standing, we can go to God any time and confess our sins and receive forgiveness and receive cleansing. So we have yes. to understand who we already are, not who we will be, who we are right now. And we understand that we're loved, mm -hmm. that we're righteous, that God has great plans for us. We run to Him and we know He will share with us everything we need. Yes, amen. And I love that the Lord comes to each of us in our own ways, and He meets us right where we're at. Yeah. So no matter where you're at right now, 
It, it doesn't matter if, if, oh, I'm so low or I, I'm really close to God right now. I'm telling you, the Lord will meet you right now exactly where you're at. And when we come back, we're going to be praying for all of you. We're going to be praying that the Holy Spirit would come and encounter you, reveal your identity, uh, open you up to receive more and more from Jesus. We'll be right back. Did you know that if you as a believer never imagine yourself to be living the superhuman life, you will settle for the ordinary? Call now and get Carrick Butler's brand new book, No Longer Mere Mortals, Seven Secrets to Living the Supernatural Life, and his three-part audio CD teaching series, Impartation of Hope and Imagination, plus his Seven Secrets bookmark. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9809. You may not wear a cape like Superman, but you are born again. You are no longer a mere mortal. You're more superhuman than you think. God created you to be a real life superhero. Pastor Carrick Butler helps you understand that you are not merely a mortal, but you are supernaturally empowered by the Holy Spirit to conquer the Goliaths of our day. In his new book, No Longer Mere Mortals, Seven Secrets to Living the Supernatural Life, he shares how to operate in God's power as a lifestyle, not a rare momentary encounter. Be empowered as a superhuman, not just as an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher. Grow by leaps and bounds in daily Christian disciplines. Understand who you are in the Messiah and what God has already accomplished in your life. Unleash your God-given supernatural powers whenever trouble strikes. Begin to defeat the Goliath staring you down. You may not wear a cape, but God made you superhuman just the same. You will also receive Carrick Butler's anointed three-part audio CD teaching series, Impartation of Hope and Imagination. Through this series, you will learn how to stir up your imagination again and live as God designed you to be. Discover how to let go of your past, move into your future with hope, and take on giant supervillains. Understand what hope is and what it is not. Learn how to cross over with your imagination. Discover how to walk in your future as a superhuman through Carrick Butler's powerful book, and three-part audio CD teaching series. Get ready to step past the limit of what seems possible and experience the wonder of God working through you. Refuse to settle for the ordinary. Activate your imagination and imagine yourself as the superhuman God created you to be. Plus, you'll receive Carrick's Seven Secrets bookmark. It displays all seven secrets to a supernatural life with a scripture reference. You may not wear a cape like Superman, but if you are born again, you are no longer a mere mortal. You're more superhuman than you think. Carrick Butler wants you to be a superhero. He says you are created to be God's supernatural solution for a world beset with villains. Don't miss out on getting Carrick Butler's powerful brand new book, No Longer Mere Mortals, Seven Secrets to Living the Supernatural Life, and his three-part audio CD teaching series, Impartation of Hope and Imagination, plus his Seven Secrets bookmark. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9809. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9809 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Welcome back to Something More. So. I want to know about the opposite side now. We've talked about hearing God's voice. We've talked about implementing the strategy. We've talked about being loved for exactly who we are, knowing our identity. Okay, now let's talk about the things that come against this. You wrote five tactics that the enemy uses to try to steal our destiny from us. So will you share those with us? Sure. We see this in Mark chapter 4. Satan only has five tactics. 
It's affliction, which is pressure brought by circumstance. Persecution, which is pressure brought by people. Cares of this world, which is anxiety and worry. Deceitfulness of riches. That's not riches, it's lies about money, believing lies about wealth. And then lust of other things, inordinate strong desires. Those are the five tactics. Affliction and persecution are attacks from the outside. Jesus compares it to the scorching sun. The last three are internal things, which means these are seeds Satan sows. He wants to sow anxiety in people's life. He wants to sow deceitful of riches in people's life. He wants to sow lust of other things in people's mm. life. The whole purpose of this is to choke out or to crowd out the word. It reminds me of, you know, people who played musical chairs growing up. Sometimes it wasn't always the fastest person who won. <laughs> it was the person who knew how to knock someone out of the seat. That's the person who won the game. True. And that's what those seeds try to do, is try to knock the word off the throne of your life. Mm. And, and as we were sharing, so many people have been dealing with anxiety and worry and care and stress and that you thought you know a little stress was good a little worry was good but no none of it's good but now we've seen it just blossom over the planet yes. and one of the reasons the enemy does that is to stop the word from working in people's life to stop their destinies to stop their strategy and i want to encourage people right now wherever you are hey you don't have to carry that care Jesus is your caretaker, and he always takes care of you in grand style. That's why he says, cast your care upon him, because he cares for you. And so anytime you feel worried or anxious or care, you have to follow what the scripture says. In that moment, turn to prayer. Make your supplication known to God with thanksgiving. Why do you say thank you? It's just polite when God gives you something to say thank you. And if you really believe he hears you when you pray, you should end with saying thank you. And so I want to pray for you right now, those of you who are dealing with worry, stress, anxiety, care. This is not your destiny. This is not your life. This is not your load to carry. You are not made to care for it. And we're going to pray for someone right now. You've been dealing with this worry. As soon as you let it go, you'll be healed of that issue in your body too. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice, my brothers and sisters. I pray that you strengthen them right now on the inside, that you help them cast their cares upon you, that they let go of every anxiety, every worry, every load and stress that has come with things that have come upon this planet, that they refuse to hold on to it, but they cast it upon you because you care for them. And as they let it go right now, Father, I pray for your healing power to surge through their bodies right now to deliver them from what the enemy has wrought. We speak to issues in the digestive systems. Be healed right now. Be made whole. We command everything in your body that is a result of stress, that is a result of anxiety. We command it to leave and we command your body to be made whole. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding, yeah, you harass in spirit around that person's mind. You let them go right now. You do not have the right to stay. We command you to leave in the authority of Jesus. And may the healing power of God be administered to each and every single person under the sound of my voice, be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet by the stripes of Jesus and the anointing of God. Mm. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And so when we have this inward yeah. persecution that the enemy comes and sows, you just prayed for them to basically refocus in yeah. prayer, refocus on Jesus. And so anytime the enemy comes and brings lies, you know, how can we discern that hey, this is the enemy. Yeah. Is, is there a specific way that he's going to come and speak to them to try to steal these seeds? Yeah, he'll, the thing is, he's slick. <laughs> and everything he does is crafted in deception. Yeah. And the only way you can see through his deception is with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. and being a person in the Word every single day. And knowing what it tells you in Philippians 4, 8, that you're thinking of things that are good, lovely, of a good report, you turn to that scripture. So does, is this thought lining up with the Word of God? Is this thought lining up with what God has told me, what He wants me to do in my life? And if it's not, we have to do what the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians. We take every single thought captive. We don't let thoughts just show up in our mind. So think about this, if Amazon or FedEx drops a package at, off your doorstep, you don't have to bring it inside. You can return to sender. We don't have to take every single thought that comes in our head, because not every thought that comes in our head is from us. Some thoughts are sent from the devil and harassing spirits, seeing if you will take that thought. And so if a thought comes in your head that is not yours, you reject it. You say, that's not my thought. I'm not thinking about that. I refuse to think about that. I think on things that are good. I think on things that are lovely. I think on things that are full of the Word of God, things that are beautiful, things that are worthy of praise. This is what I'm choosing to think on. And we make that our habit every single day. It's easier to fight and it's easier to win. And so we're just going to pray and release um, over you guys that the Lord would give them each yeah. 
battle strategies that let's just wrap this up in prayer and just we're going to go out in prayer over you guys to so just get ready to receive. Um, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to come and begin to flow even right now into each and every one of your homes. I believe the power of God is going to manifest upon you. I believe you're going to get a revelation of the strategist. And so right now, would you just release that upon them? I release freedom on you to hear. Mm -hmm. There's someone watching right now who said, it's so hard. Stop saying that. It's easy to hear from your God because He loves you. Be free to hear from your Heavenly Father. Receive strategies, receive insights, and receive the great joy, because joy is a weapon. You've been stressing too much, you've been worried too much, you've been afraid too long. Receive the joy of the Holy Ghost, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. It will empower you to walk out the strategy He has given you. So receive insight, receive the counsel of the Lord, receive the strategy for your life, for your family, for your ministry, for your business. It's not hidden from you, it's hidden for you, and we release eyes that see, ears that hear, perceptive hearts that can flow with the Holy Ghost and walk with Him each and single step of the way. May you grow exponentially in wisdom and understanding and in the anointing of God. Mm. Hallelujah. And right now, I just ask, Lord, that you would remove veils from people's eyes that have been blocking um, the strategies from coming, that there's been this, this veil right now, Holy Spirit, blow upon that veil. Remove that veil right now by your anointing. And Father, I thank you that your glory is flooding homes right now, that people who've not felt the presence of God before it's filling you now in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak healing and mighty blessings over you and over all your family. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, we thank you so much for joining us today on Something More, and we look forward to having you guys back with us next week. We'll see you then.